Good morning. Please welcome Jay Garrity. Maggie From the Garrity. capital in Lansing, we Will are here Garrity. today for the inauguration Emily of the Grace 49th Gilchrist. governor of the state of Michigan, Garland, Gretchen Whitmer. Stay tuned. Sherry Shrewsbury and Sydney Shrewsbury. A production of the Michigan Association of Broadcasters and Michigan Association of Public Broadcasters with funding provided in part by AT&T Michigan. Live from the Capitol Building in Lansing, this is Inauguration 2019. Welcome. 27 degrees outside and nothing falling from the sky. We are here in Lansing for the inauguration at the Capitol Building. I am Vincent Duffy, the news director at Michigan Radio, and with me this morning is Zoe Please Clark, our program uh, director at Michigan Radio. Zoe, good morning. Good morning, Vince. We are out here on the Capitol lawn here in Lansing for all of the pomp and circumstance of the inaugural tradition. The telecast today is a cooperative effort of Michigan's commercial and public radio and TV stations with underwriting in part from AT&T and T Michigan. Earlier today, we had a parade of flags that went by with all the flags of the nations around the world. We also heard a beautiful rendition of the national anthem from uh, children from Pam's Academy here in Lansing. Three little ones who knocked it out of the park. They did. The, the crowd even cheered quite loudly when uh, one of the young ladies hit the very high notes of the national anthem. It was amazing to be able to sing that here in the cold. Uh, soon we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, and that'll be led by the children and nieces and nephews of the governor-elect and the lieutenant governor-elect. Right now we're hearing the uh, Rabbi Amy Bigman of Congregation Shered Zedek in East Lansing. For our state as we begin this new year, as we welcome new leadership for our state, we also remember that each of us must serve the state of Michigan through serving the communities of which it is comprised and by helping those who were elected to lead us. As we begin this new year, we renew our dedication to making our state a better place for all. May our leaders be blessed with good health and fortitude, dedication and kindness, wisdom and compassion, strength and perseverance. May 2019 be a good year for our state, our country, and our world. Amen. Amen. Please welcome Susan Anderson of Okemos. Hi. I am so honored to be here today on this wonderful occasion. For those of us who live near the Capitol, we have certain advantages. Our House and Senate members live close and attend many community activities. I got to know Gretchen Whitmer many years ago and told her if she ran for governor, I would volunteer for her 40 hours a week so I organized a group of women between the ages of 65 and 80. <laughs> Don't laugh, they collected 8,500 petition signatures. Right. <laughs> they knocked on 47,000 doors Whoa. and they made thousands of phone calls. Thank you to all the volunteers who helped get us here today. Many of them are in the audience as we speak. If you knocked doors, gathered signatures, made calls, or helped in any other way, let's hear it. Make some noise. Clap your hands. Jump up and down. I didn't hear you. I need it loud. Let's have a round of applause for the volunteers. I would also like to recognize all of the members of the Michigan Supreme Court who are here today. Chief Justice Stephen J. Markman, Justice Brian K. Zara, Justice Bridget Mary McCormick, Justice David F. Viviano, Justice Richard Bernstein, 
and Justice Elizabeth Clement. And now, please welcome Chief Justice of the Michigan Supreme Court, Stephen J. Markman, to the podium. It's an honor to participate this morning. As always, it's not the oath that makes us believe the individual, but the individual who makes us believe the oath. And that is what makes today's ceremony so significant. I'd like to invite the following individuals to join me on the podium in taking their oaths of office. For the Wayne State Board of Governors, Brian C. Barnhill and Anil Kumar, for the Michigan State University Board of Trustees, Kelly Sharon T. Bay and, and Brianna Scott. For the University of Michigan Board of Regents, Paul Brown. And for the State Board of Education, Judith Pritchett and Tiffany Tilly. Could I, ask you, could I ask you please to raise your right hand and repeat the following after me, please. I state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> the folks who are, uh, just took the office are Democrats. Justice Markman will now administer the oath to the Office of the Court of Appeals, Douglas B. Shapiro, Brock Swartzel, and Jonathan Tucker. I would now like to invite four other individuals up here also to take their oath of office, all newly elected to the Michigan Court of Appeals. They are Judge Jane Beckering, Judge Douglas Shapiro, Judge Brock Swartzel, and Judge Jonathan Tuckle. And the judge is approaching this podium now. And would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me as well. I state your name, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of judge of the Michigan Court of Appeals according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. Justice Markman was chosen uh, by his fellow justices by the court to serve as Chief Justice in 2017. He's actually going to be unable to run again, though, because of how state constitutional law works. Now you can't run over uh, after your Please 70. welcome former Michigan State Senator Bruce Patterson. Bruce Canton. Patterson wearing a bright red cap and his uh, infamous mustache that he's had for many a decade here in Lansing. He will be introducing the justices who will be administering the oath of office. Good morning, everyone. He's not yes, wearing Governor, an overcoat. I brought my constitution. I'm cold for him. For those of you that have not served in office, you probably don't know that it's not something for the weak of heart. I served with Governor uh, Whitmer when she was a mere senator. I found out firsthand that she's not only intelligent, thoughtful, determined, has grit, and is honest and trustworthy. And that's coming, is Mike Prusy here? That's coming from a Republican, thus the red stormy. As governor, she'll have the opportunity to work 
with leaders in the Senate and the House. I'd like to take a moment and recognize Senator Majority Leader Mike Shirky. Republican Caucus. Senate Democrat Leader Jim Ananich. Senator Jim Ananich of Flint will continue. Speaker elect Lee leader. Chatfield. And Democrat Leader elect Christine Gregg. Known as the Quadrant in Lansing. I would like to offer my thanks to all of you that have served. As we all know, under the Michigan Constitution, we have a tripartite form of government with the judicial branch being co-equal with the legislative and executive branches. In just a moment, Michigan Supreme Court Justice Bridget Mary McCormick will administer the oath of office for the Supreme Court to the incumbent Justice Elizabeth Clement. And retired Michigan Supreme Court Justice Michael F. Kavanaugh will be administering the oath to his daughter, Megan Kathleen Kavanaugh. The justices are standing up behind the former the senator and ready to take the oath. Of the judiciary will administer oaths of office to the statewide and administrative officers in accordance with Article 11, Section 1 of the Michigan Constitution as amended. First, United States District Court Judge for the Eastern District, Judge Bernard so again, this is A. Friedman, Bruce will administer the he oath to Attorney State General from Dana Nessel, to 2002. He was then in the state who will Senate then offer remarks. To 2011. So then noted, retired uh, United uh, States uh, Court of Appeals, uh, Sixth Circuit, uh, Governor Damon, Judge Whitmer. Damon Keith will administer the oath to the Secretary of State, ready here to watch Jocelyn the Benson, new who will Two who will then offer uh, us justices, her remarks. One who, uh, and Megan then 36th Kavanaugh District will be Court Judge oath, as well as Beth Clement, Elia Sabri will administer the oath to Lieutenant Governor Elect Garland Gilchrist II, and then she who won will then election offer us his remarks. In so I what ask that, that now the, the judges and justices what will that please mean come to the court? Well, it's Thank actually you. interestingly enough, uh, two uh, uh, folks. Uh, oh, let's let's go back to watch this really quick as uh, Justice Bridget Mary McCormick. Please raise your right hand. I do solemnly Start swear that I will support the Constitution of the Clement. United States. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Of Justice of the Supreme Court. Of Justice of the Supreme Court. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Uh, big hug between the justices. Bridget Mary McCormick uh, ran in 2012. Prior to that, she was a professor at U of M. Now we have uh, retiring Justice, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, Justice Michael Kavanaugh. Yeah. Repeat after me. I, Megan Kathleen Kavanaugh. I, Megan Kathleen Kavanaugh. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the State of Michigan. That I will support the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties and responsibilities. The duties and responsibilities. Of the Office of Justice of the Michigan Supreme Court. Of the Office of Justice of the Michigan Supreme Court. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. A nice moment. Yes, yeah, an emotional moment there. Father and daughter. Now, we should also say uh, that retired Justice Michael Kavanaugh spent 32 years on the state Supreme Court, believed to possibly be tied with James Campbell, a former Next justice, Attorney General, but he uh, spent Nessel. 32 years in the mid-1800s. So we're not exactly <laughs> sure to the day or not, but they're tied there. It's a record to break. It is, it yeah. is. And now we see uh, Dana Nessel, Attorney General-elect, uh, getting up on stage, and it is uh, Senior Justice Bernard Friedman that is going uh, to admit Minister the oath you to uh, swear, the Attorney General. I solemnly Act. swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And that I will faithfully Senior discharge. Judge, uh, Bernard and that I will Freeman faithfully discharge the duties and responsibilities the, of the Attorney General. <laughs> the duties and responsibilities of the Attorney General. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. All right. All right. Hey. 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 
Nessel, Dana Nessel. Friedman with her wife, the, Elena. Friedman is the federal judge in Detroit who issued that historic ruling that upheld the U.S. Supreme Court <laughs> uh, declaring same-sex marriage the law of the land. Good morning, everyone. And here is Attorney General Nessel. <laughs> it is... <laughs> It is impossible for me to overstate how honored and privileged I am to be standing before you today as Attorney General of this incredible state, which I have called home throughout all my life. <laughs> Two years ago, I stood on these same steps after marching with thousands of other women demanding equality and representation with the pledge that together we would create a state government that would hear and understand the voices of women in Michigan. So looking around here, seeing who's being sworn in today, I'd say that worked out pretty well. Lots of laughter I and applause ran for this from the office crowd. On many issues, but for one simple reason. I wanted the people of Michigan to feel like they truly had a government that really cared about them again. And I wanted a government that cared equally about all the people of our state, irrespective of income, race, geography, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity. We are all Michiganders, and we are all entitled to equal protection under the law. Every one of us, no matter who we are, with the belief and understanding that the wealthiest CEO from the most powerful corporation doesn't deserve any more rights than the smallest child in the poorest neighborhood. <laughs> Dignity, respect, and recognition of one's basic humanity. That's not too much to expect from our elected leaders, right? At least I don't think it should be. John Wesley said it best, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, to all the people you can, for as long as you ever can. That's what I would like to use the Office of Michigan Attorney General to do. Just to help as many people as I possibly can for the time I have there. To use all the power and all the authority and all the resources just to help as many people in this state as possible. Now, I I'm not always going to succeed. Sometimes I'll falter. Sometimes I will fail, but this I will promise. I will always try to do the best I possibly can to bring justice to those who need it most. So thank you to my beautiful family. Thank you to my wonderful sons, Alex and Zach, who have endured a lifetime of being made to wear terrible matching t-shirts and in the blink of an eye, turned out to be really amazing young men and wonderful people. Thank you to my beautiful wife, Alana, who has stood by me through all of my greatest triumphs and my worst hair days. Thank you to my grandparents, who escaped the horrors of war and somehow ended up in Detroit, where they proved Michigan was a place where even for penniless immigrants, who spoke no English and possessed no skills or education that their granddaughter could grow up to become the top lawyer in a state of 10 million people. I will do my best each and every day to make you proud and to honor your memories. And lastly, thank you to the people of the state of Michigan for giving me the privilege an honor of standing up in a court of law and having the opportunity to say, Dana Nessel appearing on behalf of the people. I will never forget why I am there or who I am there to represent. Thank you very much.
the remarks of Attorney Vice General now Dana Nessel. She has never been elected to office before, but she clearly hasn't. has experience, as she mentioned, uh, litigating in front of the Supreme Court and winning that case uh, for marriage also equality. Indeed, also the first uh, openly gay elected official uh, statewide here in Michigan. Chris Kolb, a former state representative uh, from Ann Arbor, was the first uh, openly gay uh, representative right. in Michigan. Judge Damon J. Keith, the senior United States Court of Appeals judge, will now administer the oath to Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. Secretary-elect Benson is a Democrat and the former dean of the Wayne State Law School in Detroit. Jocelyn Benson. Jocelyn Benson. Who's been elected. Who's been elected. As the Secretary of State of the great state of Michigan. As the Secretary of State of the great state of Michigan. And I will perform my duties. And I will perform my duties. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Yeah. Judge Keith was nominated in 1977 by Jimmy Carter, and we should note that he actually administered the oath of office to Jennifer Granholm, governor, uh, in 2003 and 2007. To Governor-elect Whitmer, Lieutenant Governor-elect Gil Gilchrist, distinguished officials and leaders on this morning's dais, to my fellow constitutional officers, members of the state legislature, to Judge Damon Keith, family, friends, and other distinguished guests. It is a new day for democracy here in the state of Michigan. I began my career in Montgomery, Alabama, investigating hate groups and hate crimes throughout the country. And it was there, standing at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, where I was instilled with a deep commitment to do everything I could wherever I was to continue the work of those leaders in 1965 who sacrificed everything to protect our sacred right to vote. And now, as your Secretary of State, I will work every day to bring that same commitment as our state's chief election officer to protect your vote, your voice, and your democracy. And I am ready. I am ready to work to make us a national leader in fair and accessible elections, to ensure that our legislative districts are drawn by citizens in a nonpartisan manner. A nod to a proposal two there. I am ready to secure our democracy and to work with all of you to take Michigan from worst to first in transparency, ethics, and accountability. I'm ready to instill a new standard and expectation for excellent customer service in our state government because every person, no matter where you live in the state of Michigan, deserves to get in and out of our branch offices in less than 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> and I stand here before you today as a military spouse ready to help ensure our government works to serve and protect our military service members, families, and veterans just as they have worked to serve and protect all of us. It is the greatest honor of my life to stand before you now as Michigan's 43rd Secretary of State. I am grateful for your trust and your support, and I am ready to work as hard as you do every day in my service to you and to the interests of our state, our people, and our democracy. Thank you. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, Benson mentioning her military service, the only military veteran on the steps today. Garland Gilchrist. <laughs> Judge Aliyah Sabri will be the 36th District Court, rather, the 36th District Court. She will administer the oath to the Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist II. And a big hug between Lieutenant, uh, or I should say, Lieutenant Elect. <laughs> <laughs> for and, a few uh, moments. <laughs> for a few moments more. And uh, Governor Elect Gretchen Whitmer. Support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. The Office of Lieutenant Governor. The Office of Lieutenant Governor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> History made now. The first African American lieutenant governor for the state of Michigan will address the crowd. Only 36 years old. 
He is 6'8", so we should mention he did just have to move the microphone a little, <laughs> a little higher there. Good morning. My grandma Doris, a social studies teacher in Detroit, was the first person to teach me about democracy. When she walked me through the corridors of this great capital, I think about her as we stand upon these steps this morning. They are more than the pathway to the chambers of lawmaking and the halls of collaboration. They are the stopping points that we as Michiganders gather upon every few years to define the goals and promises our state will pursue. Platforms upon which we pause to examine our past from above as we look to the future ahead with open eyes and open hearts. Rungs of the ladders of aspiration that we climb day by day to make life better for all of the people who call Michigan home. It is with those people in mind, my fellow Michiganders, that we stand here before you with open minds and open hands. From Flint to my hometown of Detroit, from Dexter to Delta County, let us choose to lock arms and walk forward together in the spirit of peace and love with one accord into our shared and connected destiny. Let us choose to leave no cry for help unheard, no call for empathy unanswered, and no opportunity for collaboration on the table. Thank you to the millions of people who stepped up to participate in our democratic process by voting, volunteering, conversing, and caring about our state. We are all here thanks to you. Folks shouting thank you back from the audience. We do not ascend these steps alone. We are lifted here by the visions of indigenous people, immigrants, and travelers who planted the seeds of the future in our fertile soil, giving rise to the bounty, beauty, and innovation that set our state apart. Lifted by the dreams of grandparents like mine who migrated here from Alabama and Arkansas and all across the world in search of opportunity. Lifted here in Michigan where they came and found our pleasant peninsula that marks God's handprint on our planet. Lifted by the sweat of parents like mine who as the first of their generation to go to college sacrifice to make real the promise of a middle-class life that could position their only child for success. I come here alongside my beautiful wife, Ellen, who I cannot thank enough for being my motivator and my foundation. And my children, Garland and Emily, whose imaginations inspire me to want to enable the imagination and possibility that exists within every person in our state. Yes, we have big problems to solve and specific issues to address. And regardless of our political affiliations or sensibilities, it is up to all of us to participate in leadership and governance in Michigan. I stand here embodying a generation of Michiganders with fire in our bellies for what is possible going forward. That flame was lit by our ancestors and fanned by the technology and innovation that evolved as we came of age. Now we are here ready to listen, ready to serve, and ready to stand tall. Today, as every Michigander repositions our hands on the arc of history, let us remember that the strongest bridges that connect us are rooted in equity, justice, and honesty. If we choose these values today and every day, we together will move Michigan forward and leave it better than we found it. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the great state of Michigan.
Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. We see folks uh, standing, applauding, including former Governor Blanchard. We see Jocelyn Please Benson, welcome. Secretary of State. Of and Vince, we're Sharing lots of hugs as well. Lots of hugs. We are preparing to hear from Governor-elect, we should say, Soon Gretchen governor. Whitmer. Yes. Soon governor, the 49th governor of the state of Michigan. So the big event coming up in just a few moments here at the Capitol in Lansing. Hello, uh, everybody, and Happy New Year. <laughs> it is truly an honor to be here today. Again, my name is Bridget Bonds. I'm a resident from Flint, Michigan. And I actually met Miss Gretchen back in March 2018. She was there visiting the Detroit Children's Hospital during the reading awareness. And at that time, my son Corey was having surgery on his spine. And I'm sorry, excuse me. Wiping a few tears away. Yeah. He's in the audience now. He's doing so much better. And I'm Governor sorry. Governor like Whitmer applauding. But she was there. And of all the registered voters in the room, I can remember her going up to my son and asking him, what would, she, what would he like, I'm sorry, what would he like to see change from the new governor? And out of all the people in the room, the fact that he, she went up to my son, just, it, it touched my heart. It done something to me. So as I stand here, thinking about that moment, it means so much to me. And not just for me, and not just for my son, but for all of Michigan. At this time, I would like to also recognize my own mayor of Flint, Karen Weaver. Round of applause. Thank you for joining us today. Mayor Mike Duggan from the city of Detroit. Another round of applause from the crowd. Thank you for being here also. And I'd like to recognize three countywide elected officials who also listen to and work with the people they serve. Wayne County's prosecutors, Kim Worthy. <laughs> Macomb County Executive, Mark Hackle. And Bay County Executive, Jim Barcia. It is now my great honor to invite Justice Elizabeth Clement and Justice Richard Bernstein who will administer the oath of governor to elect a very beautiful and very special Ms. Gretchen Whitmer. Big hugs between Bridget Bonds and the governor-elect. And we have Supreme Court Justice Beth Clement and Justice Richard Bernstein. Getting ready to, oh, big hug there between uh, the justices. Gretchen putting her hand or on the Bible right now. Her husband, Dr. Mark uh, Mallory, the governor-elect's husband, is hope. holding the Bible. Let us find joy. Let us find optimism. Today, let us be idealists. For today, we build bridges and come together as one. And it is with that spirit that I call upon my close friend, Justice Beth Clement, to administer the oath to our next governor. Folks are standing now. We have a former governor, Jennifer Granholm, appears to be taking swear. photos. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Governor. The duties of the Office of Governor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. 
Governor Gretchen Whitmer, That's 49th right. Governor of Michigan. Big hugs from her two daughters. A hug to her husband, Dr. Mallory. Now she is hugging Justice Richard Bernstein and Justice Elizabeth Clement. And you're hearing a 19-gun salute. 19 gun salutes are fired for governors, vice presidents, other officials. 21 gun salutes are saved strictly for the president of the United States. The uh, 1st Battalion, 119th Infantry Regiment traces its history back to the French and Indian Wars. That predated the American Revolution and the unit known as Rogers Rangers stationed at Fort Detroit. Also heard some brief music from the band playing Ruffles and Flourishes. We did. Smoke and is uh, starting to fill the Capitol lawn. Bright orange flashes seen through the smoke as the cannons continue to fire. And appreciation from the crowd. We Gretchen. now have uh, four governors on uh, on stage. Three former Jennifer Granholm, Governor, former Governor Blanchard, Rick Snyder, all standing, waiting for the smoke to clear. <laughs> governor Whitmer will have now her first opportunity as governor to lay out some of the priorities that she will have for the state of Michigan during her tenure. But we are uh, we are waiting the flyover, and uh, at one moment, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, Governor Whitmer, pointed to the sky, <laughs> saying, "It's coming." <laughs> Folks are uh, looking up at the sky, waiting for the the flyover. These are four UH-60 Blackhawk helicopters, and they're from the 3238th General Support Aviation Battalion stationed at a base out of Grand Ledge, not far from here in Lansing, and here they go. There they are. Folks right. looking up to the sky. Well, I saw two. And here is Governor Gretchen Whitmer preparing to give her I know you're address. awake now, right? <laughs> my friends, my family, my fellow Michiganders, it is an incredible honor to be here with you today as the 49th governor of the great state of Michigan. I would not be here today without my family, who I've got to acknowledge. My husband, Mark, my daughter, Sherry, Sydney, my stepsons, my father, my sister, my brother. Thank you all so much for your support, the sacrifices you've made over these two years, for inspiring me every single day. I love you. And I am honored to be joined by Governor Snyder, Governor Granholm, and Governor Blanchard. And but for the Spartans being on the West Coast and Governor Milliken not being able to join us, I know he and Governor Engler would be here too. Each of them knows the incredible opportunity and sacrifice in holding this office. And we owe each of them a debt of gratitude and appreciation for their service and for being here today. Thank you. As I think about the monumental task that lies ahead, another one of my predecessors comes to mind. Over 60 years ago, Governor G. Menon Williams, also known as Soapy Williams, a Democrat, worked with a Republican legislature and built the Mackinac Bridge. Now at that time, at that time, people believed that building a suspension bridge that long, it was not possible, they thought. Others thought politicians would not be able to put their differences aside and get it done. They even mocked it, calling it Soapy's Folly. But the leaders together from both parties and workers from across our state proved them all wrong. 
And in November of 1957, against the odds, the Mighty Mac opened. And it connected our peninsulas. It connected our people. And it strengthened our economy. And most of all, it sent a powerful message to the world. Don't ever bet against Michigan. So in the spirit of that great legacy, I want to recognize the incoming legislative leadership. Senate Majority Leader Shirky, Senate Democratic Leader Ananick, House Speaker Chatfield and House Democratic Leader Greg, and all of the members of the legislature who have joined us here today. I am so looking forward to working with you over the next weeks and months and years. We may belong to different parties, but we are all here today for the same reason. We are proud Michiganders, first and foremost. And we owe it to the people we serve to cast partisanship aside, to roll up our sleeves, and to build bridges together. I feel lucky to have called Michigan home my whole life. I grew up in Grand Rapids and learned the value of community and hard work. I got a world-class education from Michigan State in East Lansing and a law degree in Detroit. And after law school, I wanted to make my home in East Lansing near my parents and I knew this was the place where I wanted to raise my family. Because to me, Michigan is more than just a place. Michigan is a way of life. Up north in the lakes in summer, football in the fall, hunkering down at home in the winter, or freezing out here with thousands of your friends. And thawing out in the spring if we're lucky, knock on wood. We love our four seasons and our proud traditions. But of course we know what truly makes Michigan special are the people who call this state home. Our diverse cultures, backgrounds, and experiences that strengthen the fabric of our communities. From Poonchki to Pasty. <laughs> From Minor to Motorhead. And whether you live in Gogibic County, or Groves Eel, or Grand Rapids, all Michiganders share some same common traits that are a part of the legacy that we've inherited in this great state we call home. I'm talking about grit and humility, dreaming up something new and building it with our own two hands. That's how we became a hotbed of innovation and created music that moved the world. It's why Michigan will forever be known by names like Ruther and Ford and Aretha. It's why a century after we led a global manufacturing revolution, we still have the best workforce on the planet. From our farmers to our factory workers to our incredible state employees who work tirelessly to keep Michigan strong. There is no place in the world like our state, and no people in the world like Michiganders. And no question that Michigan has as much God-given potential as any place on earth. Yeah, you can go ahead and clap for that. I see you want to, so please. <laughs> while opportunity, while potential is universal, we know that opportunity is not. And right now in Michigan, too few people have the opportunity they deserve. That's not an easy thing to admit. But we must be clear-eyed about the challenges we face. Now is the time to confront our problems head on and say in one voice, let's get it done. Over the past two years, I traveled our state and listened to people's concerns. And the same issues came up again and again and again. My campaign slogan got a lot of attention, but the truth is I didn't come up with it. It was a working mom in a hospital in Detroit 
who told me, Gretchen, I just need you to fix the damn roads. I heard similar messages from all 83 counties, from Republicans and Democrats and independents. We might live in divisive times, but Michigan's problems are not partisan. Potholes are not political, or better skills, or great schools for our kids. I will be a governor for everyone. And I am committed to working across party lines to ensure that all Michiganders have opportunity. That means rebuilding our roads and bridges, cleaning up our water, and ensuring that everyone gets the education and skills they need to get a good paying job. These issues affect us all. These things are the foundation of secure families strong communities, and a more prosperous state. None of us can afford to compromise Michigan's economic future because we won't compromise with one another. Let me say that again. None of us can afford to compromise Michigan's economic future because we won't compromise with one another. Divided government might make solving problems harder, but not impossible. We need to come together now, not as Democrats and Republicans, but as Michiganders. So let's fix our roads and be the state that is not paralyzed by partisanship, but works together. Let's create the blueprint for rebuilding Michigan's and this United States crumbling infrastructure and will be the blueprint right here in Michigan. Let's show the rest of the country how to solve America's literacy crisis and show them what good government actually looks like. And let's build a stronger Michigan that is once again the center of economic opportunity and mobility for people around the world. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Many will question whether or not we can protect our families and bolster our economy by fixing those roads. They may not believe that we can solve the literacy crisis, and no doubt, some are betting against us when it comes to closing the skills gap. But we are up to it, Michigan. We have always defied the odds, and we are going to do it again together. We are going to prove that our shared future is so much more powerful than the issues that divide us. If we put our differences aside and get to work, we will come back stronger than ever. So at a time when too many people want to separate and divide us by building walls. We here in Michigan are going to get back to building bridges together. I know I didn't get here on my own. I'm here because over the past year, the people of Michigan showed up at town halls, at rallies, and in record numbers on election day. And I am so grateful that you did. But our work is just beginning. I'm asking that you keep showing up. Keep showing your passion for our state. Keep demanding action from our leaders. And let's join forces as Michiganders to build bridges together, bridges over water, bridges between parties, and bridges to a brighter future for every one of us. Let's get to work, Michigan. Thank you.
Lots of applause and cheers for the address from the 49th governor of the state of Please Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, Solomon sticking to a number of her campaign of themes in that speech bridges we'll and roads, also talking about bipartisanship. Indeed, about a 13-minute speech that Let us she bow gave. And pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this generous gift that no other competitor provides, the blessing of this historical day. We thank you for the 49th governor of the great state of Michigan, Gretchen Esther Whitmer. We look gratefully to the past but we stand in tiptoe expectation of a glorious future. However, we are clear and cognizant that while we praise you, there are those in pain. While we shout about your sovereignty, there are those who are suffering. While we celebrate, there are those who wrestle with a crisis of conscience. In a climate where there are those who seek to be divisive and destructive, we ask that our diversity not be a source of separation but a point of pride and a reason for unity. We seek your divine wisdom to endow our leaders with a spirit of reconciliation and restoration. We pray for Governor Whitmer and her family, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist and his family, and the entire administration. They have done the preparation, but nothing is possible without your power and your provision. It is our prayer that our leadership will always be cognizant and clear that they are not here for self but for service, not for greed but to meet needs, not to side with wrong but to always fight for what is right, unafraid to challenge the hate while offering a message of liberty and life. So we ask today that you would inspire us by your example. When we falter, forgive us. When we have success, give us humility. When we are uncertain, forever guide our feet in a way where our ultimate motivation will be to hear you say, well done. This is our prayer in the mighty, matchless, and majestic name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. That was Pastor Solomon Kinlock, Jr. of Triumph Church of Detroit. And now we will hear from Sheikh Ahmed Hamoud of the Please Islamic welcome, Center Sheikh of America, Ahmed Dearborn. Sheikh Ahmed Hamoud of the Islamic Center of America, who will offer a prayer for the Michigan people. Peace be upon you. It's an opportunity for me to be with you here today in this historical moment. Please join me in a prayer. Bismillah. In the name of God, the most merciful, we stand here today in hopes of a brighter future led by our new governor. O oh Lord, please strengthen her heart as she pushes to protect the rights of every resident, no matter their color, race, religion, or status. O oh Lord, please guide the new administration on a path that provides success in our communities, workplaces, schools, and at home. O oh Lord, please give our leaders the compassion and courage needed to work together gracefully for betterment of all of Michigan. O oh Lord, please provide our leaders with wisdom to do what is necessary to protect our most precious resources from our lands and waters to our works and families. O oh Lord, Make this administration capable and responsible, fair and just, honest and trustworthy. Finally, God bless you all. God bless our state, Michigan, our people. Happy New Year and thank you. Again, a prayer from Sheikh Ahmed Hamoud of the Islamic Center of America in Dearborn. United, States, uh, United Senator States Senator Gary, Gary Peters. Peters. He will now be uh, retiring the colors. As that Thank happens, Zoe, Rabbi what were your thoughts Stephen about the Pastor speech Kinlock that Governor 
Gretchen she, Whitmer gave today. Well, I mean, I think what today. she did was Today's exactly what uh, presidential historian, Michigan historian Cleves Whitney uh, said a few weeks ago, which was really sort of these speeches are a handshake to voters, right? It's a reintroduction of the kind of governor that she wants to be. Uh, folks in the crowd, I, I saw a few uh, folks so crying, actually, which is the normal Michigan for these kind of things. But these aren't political speeches, right? This is about uh, having Michiganders come together. I did think it was interesting, though. She she had a nod to divided government and, and said that we can't be paralyzed by partisanship, which, of course, she is a Democratic governor, but she is going to have a Republican majority in both the state House and state Senate. So not only a handshake with the voters, but perhaps a handshake with the members of the legislature as well, who she's going to have to work with. I think I think so. And I think she absolutely knows, as her administration knows, that if they're going to get anything done, that's what has to happen. And it's so interesting to think about that we are watching this sort of bipartisanship or democracy in in action while, of course, the federal government is shut down. Is so what can we learn from uh, past administrations with uh, this type of separation between Democrats and Republicans? Well, the fact is, Vince, that Gretchen Whitmer, Governor Whitmer, has an amazing amount of experience, and that is what we're going to look forward to, and we're going to have to leave it there. Yeah, she's had a career in the State House, so that does wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you for joining us, and Zoe, thank you for uh, sharing the podium here with me today. Vince, the pleasure was all mine. We want to thank you for joining us today, and a big thank you to AT&T Michigan for helping to underwrite the program today. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Once again, this I'm program is brought to you by the Michigan Association of Broadcasters and 